Welcome back. Stasa 23 here, back again with some knife therapy. And today is the day that I'm going to give you my final review of the Benchmade Anthem. Definitely, in my eyes, the, the, the nicest Benchmade out to date. Now, you know, that's just my opinion. You know, you, you can think it's the worst, whatever. Just my opinion. Um, I'm trying to get the camera to focus on the number 781 I think that is Anthem and what you have here uh, is a nice drop point blade just a classic blade shape uh, 20 CV blade steel beautiful crown spine that's something that I really enjoy and uh, the the big thing on this knife, what makes it so unique besides looking cool as can be, is that it's an integral. An integral just means that it's a one piece handle that was milled out, tons of machine time, that usually uh, equates into a higher price tag. And being that this is a USA made blade, uh, would be the reason why this thing is um, Retail price at around $425. Yeah, and I know that's a hefty price tag and I will leave it to you after I give you my thoughts and opinions on whether, you know, you want to shell out this kind of cash. Um, I was able to pick this one up on trade with my good buddy Copper Dice um, and I think we did a fair, fair trade overall. We even have a video that we're going to post on how we went about our trade and I'll post that one later. But... Um, so I was also, he had, he had lent me this knife for about a month prior to actually doing the trade. So I've had a good bit of uh, pocket time on this knife. And here recently, my daughter had her eighth birthday and uh, I used this knife exclusively uh, to do all the cutting chores of that party. And there was a lot of stuff that could have used the scissor, but hey, I got a knife. Just like I uh, know all you knife guys, Hey, baby, you don't need that scissor. We got a knife to do the task. And I've cut a bunch of stuff, a lot of uh, thick materials, which I find whenever you're, you're bearing down, that's when you notice if you have any hot spots or not. Um, and I've also, you know, I was also doing some fine cutting tasks. And I will say that the knife performed beyond my expectations. I try not to put too much expectations in a knife just because it's a you know a, a much worse letdown whenever it doesn't meet your expectations uh, the blade steel on this guy is 20 cv benchmade does such a great job of heat treating their 20 cv probably are you know from my experience some of the best in the business um, let's see definitely didn't want to focus today it's a first production run mine is that 706 of a thousand I much, I much prefer, you know, I, I don't, I wish they didn't, didn't even put the first production there. Maybe inside the handle scales would be nice, but they definitely shrunk it down a lot and it looks a lot better than they used to. It used to be all along the blade right here. It looked just terrible. Um, this knife is still rocking the factory edge. Uh, I, I decided to leave it that way until I completely dulled the knife and let's just say I'm having troubles doing so. Um, Let's, let's actually look at the sharpness uh, from cutting all that stuff. I cut zip ties. I cut thick cardboard boxes. Um, I cut up a, uh, what do you call it, a pinata. I cut up some plastic bottles that they made into funnels. I cut up all kinds of stuff. And in the sole purpose that I could give you my thorough thoughts on ergonomics and as it performed as a knife in general, and we'll go over some of the aesthetics. But let's just see what, it, what it's like. This paper, this fumble paper is not super, super thin. Uh, but it'll definitely show you if you have any snags. And let's see. I'll be surprised to see how it goes. I'd, I'd say that's, that's, you know, definitely a great, great working edge. If not, maybe hair shaving sharp. I can't, I can't show you all that because I don't have any hair due to my accident. But... Definitely a nice edge on there. You know, you got you can easily slice. And I was thinking that I might have some some minute uh, microchipping, but guess not. 
Um, let's go over, you know, my general feeling on the aesthetics of the knife. I love uh, the bronze texture, I mean the bronze ando on here. I think though, just to make mine a little bit more custom feeling, I'm thinking about doing uh, like a copper patina look with the anno, like maybe doing uh, the bronze with the green on the peaks or something like that and stone wash. I don't know. Give me y'all thoughts down in the comment section below. I always like to hear what you guys think. Um, I, I love the way they, um, they kind of integrated being that they, they're not using the Omega Springs in here. They're using an actual co coiled spring, which we'll talk about in a second. And those are the two uh, screws that hold that little mechanism in. And I like how they integrated it into the uh, back of the knife by putting these little blocks so it blends in and it didn't stick out like a sore thumb. Great job, Benchmade. Um, the, the thinness of this knife is just right. You know, being that it's a thin knife, I was kind of worried about, um, you know, whenever, whenever I was gripping to cut through some thicker stuff, I was worried that that thinness and handle would either cause the knife to, to twist in my hands or it just wouldn't be that comfortable. But as you can see, you got these nice flowing lines, you got this nice deep toil right there that keeps you from riding up on that blade. Definitely very, very, very rock solid, secure lockup, no play left to right, up or down. Um, and I will say that whenever the, we first got this, whenever he first got this knife, he was able to hand pick it. That's something that I definitely recommend when it comes to Benchmade because sometimes their QC is not perfect and especially at this price tag, you definitely want to make sure you get a good one. Um, but as the knife broke in, it got smoother and smoother. And I think it was Apostle P was saying that, uh, you know, and at first it was kind of like, kind of sticky right here, but once you burnish those edges on that uh, titanium in there, it, it's actually, you know, it's one of the, it's the smoothest bench made I own. You know, you pull that back and it's super, super soft. And I, I really, really hope, I don't know if I can get it. Yeah, you see that? There's your coil spring that, that adds a tension for the lock bar on the axis lock instead of having those Omega Springs, which I'm not a huge fan of. I, I really hope that they start incorporating that into more of their uh, knives because that, to me, that's, that made this knife for me, you know. If it would have had the, the regular um, Omega Springs and my hands being as, as messed up as they are, I, 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 wouldn't have, I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much having to fight the resistance of that Omega Spring. You know, not might not be an issue for you, but it's something that bothers me. Uh, let's check out. As you can see, you can see the plunge line. You can see it really good coming down. They executed that sharpening toil absolutely perfect. So glad they got that right. Everybody that watched my channel knows that's a pet peeve of mine. And uh, you got the, you know, the light stone wash where you can kind of see the, uh, the, the grind lines from the uh, last belt that they used. Um, they went with a more decorative thumb stud right there. And it does, it does allow you, your thumb to get a good purchase whenever you're opening the, opening the knife. And they carried it through by putting it here on the um, on the lock disengagement. And I'll go over that again in a second. Uh, the knife is completely ambidextrous. You got thumb studs on both sides. The clip can go left or right, tip up, carry only. Um, the behind the edge. Let's see. Let's see. I'm gonna check it. I don't know what it is exactly, but I will tell you. Uh, I don't know if it's just a sharpness or what, but this thing slices like a champion. Let's see. No, it's not super thin, but 0.026 behind the edge, which which is fine with me. Uh, like I said, I, I, I kind of I prefer you know having it having it like Spyderco does it at 0 0.020, but 0 0.025. It is is not bad at all. That's a great uh, you know in the middle road. Keep you still got good slicing ability and you got some extra strength. And with the 20 CV steel, sometimes it can be chippy. Um, I've noticed it in a few other of my knives that you get some nice micro chipping. But when you got a little bit extra meat behind the edge, you know it may not be as prone to chipping as it would be if it was thinner. Um, let's see action. Like I said. Very, very nice. 
Once you pull that, once you pull that uh, pressure off that lock bar, it just free free swings. And that coil spring, the tension pulling it back is just oh, it's so nice. Can't, I can't get it through enough. Um, it's it's nice and slender in pocket. It's not a deep carry clip, but you got about that much of the of the knife sticking out of the pocket, which is not bad whatsoever. You got this attractive chevron pattern. Um, you, it carries over on the clip. They kind of uh, doubled, they made it smaller on the clip. I think it ties in well. I uh, kind of wish they would have uh, matched the anno on the two, uh, but I plan on, like I said, probably getting it anode uh, from one of the, the respected um, guys in the community. Uh, you just got standard Torx drivers, um, and being that it's an integral, all you have is these two screws, your clip screws, and this holding that in. So very, very nice, nice and clean look. Let's get a few quick size comparisons and some knives in this uh, price category. Let's see, one that I think you know it's kind of going head to head with would be your Chris Reed knives. This is the large and cozy, uh, Singo and cozy. I'm sorry. And they're almost identical in size. The Encosi is a tad bit, maybe a sixteenth of an inch longer. And the price tag is a little bit, you know, probably I think it's like uh, maybe sixty dollars more than the Anthem. And this is a, <coughs> this is a, a integral. So I don't know. I, I can't say the quality is as good, but you know, as a design and you know aesthetics, I think it's on par. Another one somewhat in the price category. This is the Microtech MK, uh, whatever. This is the newer sigil. As you can see, the sigil is a good bit longer than the Anthem. Uh, see more budget friendly knives. You got your Ontario Rat Number One. The Rat Number One's larger. And one more last one. The tried and true Spyderco Delica 4. As you can see, the Delica is a good bit smaller. Let's see, did I go over everything that I like? Let's, let's get a quick weight on this guy. I know that's important to, to some people out there. Let's see how light this knife is. 3.7 ounces. That, to me, that is awesome because, like I said, this is not a small knife. It's, uh, uh, you know, uh, to me, let's get a quick, let me just get a quick size because I didn't, not prepared. Sorry, guys. Overall length of a little bit, about eight and an eighth inches long with a three and a half inch blade. So it's definitely not a small knife. So that weight is perfect for me. Uh, in hand ergos, your hammer grip, awesome, no hot spots. Your pull cutting, no hot spots and the reverse grip is also comfortable. Um, now, in the hammer grip, let's, okay, uh, pretty much, let me make sure I went over, I went over pretty much everything that I enjoy about the knife. Now let's go to a few of the negatives that, you know, can maybe help you weigh in on whether you should buy this knife or not. All right, uh, one of the first negatives for me May not be an issue for you, but you got to remember that my hands are beat to hell and, you know, this might not be a problem for you. It might be something that you actually like, but I, you know, I like the, uh, the, the design on the thumb stud. They used it on another knife recently. Um, I can't remember the model. Let's see, close up. So you can see they carried it over on the log disengagement and the thumb stud, which I like it on the thumb stud because you get a good purchase, but... Just a little bit, whenever, I, whenever I'm closing this, you know, like the knife freak I am, it, it's not the most comfortable for me when I'm closing it. It's a little sharp, but like I said, it helps you get purchase, and it's not overly sharp to where it, it's a, a total, you know, total lose for me. So, um, let's see. Talked about that. Uh, next thing, on a knife of this caliber and this price, you know, I, I do understand that this is a completely ambidextrous knife, but in my eyes, I would have much rather them see them leave this clean and not put those and come out with a lefty model doing the clip. I know that's probably, you know, not something that's feasible or I don't know. I don't think it would have been that much big of a deal, but 
it just breaks up such a beautiful, you know, uh, beautiful design platform right here when you got these three screws. Just my thoughts, you know, like I said, I, I, I use my, my knives both left and right. I'm semi ambidextrous uh, and I sometimes carry my knives on the, in the left side, but you know, I just, I wish they would have left one of the sides clean. Okay, uh, secondly, whenever I was, cu I was cutting up some thick cardboard boxes and I was cutting through some plastic bottles and I was bearing down on the knife and when I noticed when I bared down hard or when I was pulling through some cardboard, right here, um, right here in the inside of my fingers where you got this thin portion right here, these are 90 degree edges in the inside of the frame and the fat of my finger whenever I really bear down was kind of creating a hot spot right there. Like I said, this is just for me. It may not be an issue for you, but something I definitely felt I needed to say when in, with a knife at the you know 400 plus category. And that brings me to the price. Do I think it's worth $425? Uh, that's very subjective. Uh, I, I think they did a great job on this knife. Um, and if I were you, and just like for me, if you're going to spend that much money on this knife, I would, I would suggest that you get it in hand. Like my local store had these available. They had four to choose from. And we checked blade play, smoothness. Um, one big thing we checked is centering. And out of the four knives, this was the only one that was pretty much perfect out of the box, you know. It's maybe some stuff that you can fix, but, you know, when I'm spending that kind of money, I kind of want it to be perfect right when I pull it out of the box. Uh, this one also had the edge bevel was pretty pretty consistent both sides, about exactly the same. Um, let's see if I can show you. Well, I can't really show you there. But uh, the grinds were consistent on both sides, and the uh, it was terminated nicely on both sides. The disengagement wasn't bad at all. Some of them had a little bit of stick on the lock. This one's just a joy to play with. Definitely drives my wife absolutely insane. Um, so we've talked about the semi-sharp sharp, sharpness of the uh, disengagement of the lock. Um, we talked about the price. We talked about the minor hot spot right here whenever you're really bearing down. And like I said, you got to be pushing down pretty hard, pushing the fat of your fingers through here. Um, and another thing, this is, to me, this is a pretty big deal. And a pretty ugly deal for me, especially. The shorts that I have to wear since my accident are rather thin. Let me see if I can kind of show you. Okay, say these are my shorts right here. We're going to go over this pocket clip. Not to mention my dog was looking at this and he looked at his thing and he looked at this and he looked at his thing and he was like, man, mine's bigger. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. So let me show you what happened to me. Okay. I had this knife in my thin, my thin shorts. And as you can see right here, that this is pretty much the same on all their knives that the, the clip, they leave it a little bit proud of the actual scales. I think they did that because of the chevron pattern so it wouldn't get caught up on your pockets. But whenever I had this guy in my pocket, as you can see, it's, it's barely touching. And look, let me see. If, look, it saw it, fall, it fell. There's absolutely no retention. If you have thin shorts on or thin pants, you definitely, definitely need to be wary of that. Like I said, uh, with a knife at this price point, I would have been absolutely sick if I would have lost this knife. Now, I'm, I'm just going to be honest. I had it clipped in my pocket and I sat down in my car and whenever I sat down, it pushed it up like this and it fell out of my pocket into the side of my, on the side of my seat of my car. When I got out, I was sick to my stomach, frantic. I thought I had lost it. I didn't know when, I, when it fell out of my pocket. But lo and behold, my daughter was looking for her iPad, and she found my knife, and I was the happiest man alive. So that could be a huge, huge, huge issue. You know, my, my fix to it was is that uh, I took the pocket clip off and threw it in my, I don't know if I have it, my large Chris Reed pocket sheath and just threw it in my pocket until I'll either eventually get me um, a new pocket clip made for this 
or I may tweak this clip to where it's actually touching right there. I'd rather be too tight than, you know, losing this knife. So let's, let's recap pretty much everything that we've talked about so you can try to make your best and, you know, uh, overall assumption on this knife so you can, you know, decide whether this is the right one for you. Um, great blade steel, 20 CV. They do it great. Classic drop point. Um, nice finish on the blade. My camera just not, not wanting to cooperate right now. There you go. Nice finish. Uh, just a kind of a rough finish, uh, toothy finish on the bevel, but that's okay with me. I know how to sharpen, so that's not an issue. Smoothness is just amazing, absolutely amazing. Uh, the nice decorative pivot, I mean, uh, thumb stud and disengagement. But like I said, this is a little sharp for my hands. Love the nice crown spine. Love the chevron pattern. Anode looks great, nice and consistent on the scales. Just a little bit darker on the pocket clip. Um, you know, I like, I love the new uh, way they, they implemented the lock. Uh, for the axis lock with that coil spring rather than the Omega springs. Um, so, is this knife right for you? I would say, like I said, if you can pick one up, get it in hand first. That would be my first, my first uh, suggestion. Second suggestion, if that's not possible, I would try to find one in good condition on the secondary market. Ask as many questions as you can make sure it's somebody that you trust and if you don't you don't know the guy make sure you can get some references that's how i do it um one quick thing i forgot to mention great blade to handle ratio and it's buried inside of there you're definitely not going to snag yourself on that and there was something else that i noticed that i want oh one more thing that I, before i wrap this video up i know it's already 20 minutes long not sure if this is going to become an issue but you know, whenever this smooth knife riding on bearings rockets out there and it's whacking up against there, your blade stop in the open position is the back of this titanium right here. I'm not sure whether they heat harden this or not, but you do have a flat face right there. So you do have full contact of the, uh, the knife to the, to the back of the frame. So... Hopefully that won't ever be an issue to where you develop any kind of blade play. Not sure if it would have been better to have a stop pin in there or not, but it did keep this clean, and I guess you really couldn't really pull that off being that you had the access lock right here. So, all right, I'm going I'm to wrap this guy. I'm gonna wrap this up, guys and girls. Uh, this is the Benchmade Anthem. I think, uh, I don't think, I know in my opinion, this is their best night to date. Definitely been enjoying this and it will keep it'll keep going into the pocket as long as I don't have one in for review Well, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and share it with all your friends If you like my videos in general smash that subscriber button and You won't miss a thing. So hope everybody's having an absolute wonderful day. I will see you next time. Peace